I'm back with another problem. So I'm working through the uh, Feynman lecture exercises posted on Caltech's website, uh, and I'll link that down below. So I'm, I'm going through this. I've already done. We did Atwood machine. We did bag of marbles. Weird problem. Balance moonstone. Weird problem. Now we're on ball up down. Uh, so I'll link all the stuff down below. I'll link the playlist for all of my solutions that I've done so far. I hope to work through all of them. Uh, down below. So let's get started. I, I also like to add some of these questions are kind of difficult to read and so you have to practice reading and interpreting and parsing the question but I think that's good practice. So let's just go. If you throw a small ball vertically upward in real upward in real air with drag does it take longer to go up or to come down? That's a great question. Okay, so first, um, let's just, th let me say that you, you can get an exact equation of motion for a ball with quadratic, uh, quadratic air drag, which is what this is, I assume, real air drag, um, as long as it goes up and down. But if, it, if you throw it at, at an angle, it doesn't, it's hard. Okay, so let's just say this. Let's say I take the ground and I have a ball and I throw it upward with some initial velocity V1. Once it's in the air, there's two forces acting on it. There's uh, the gravitational force Mg and then there's uh, F air. Now, there's multiple models for the air resistance. So let's use this very common one. F air is negative one half rho a C V squared V hat. So this says that the faster it goes, okay, so one half is the number one half, negative is a negative. This is the density of air, this is the size, the cross sectional area of the ball, uh, and this is the drag coefficient, depending on the shape. That's the magnitude of the velocity squared, and that's a unit vector in the direction of velocity. So this means that the vector velocity, the vector force, is in the opposite direction of the velocity. So that's why if it's moving up, then these two are down. So there's a big difference between going up and going down, because going down, if the ball's up here and it's going down, then I have the downward gravitational force like this, and I have the upward air resistance force. And so uh, if I model the motion, let's just kind of guess. Let's guess at a trajectory, okay? If I plot um, y versus t, and I throw the ball up. So this would be uh, a no air resistance ball. It's a parabola. But with air resistance, it's going to not go as high. But then on the way down, it starts it's going to have a lower acceleration going down, so it will take, I want to say, like that. That would have a greater acceleration. So it would be like this, I guess. Yeah, because it could be a uh, terminal velocity. It could be going at a constant speed. So with that in mind, I would say it's going to take longer. My first guess is it's going to take longer to get down than it does to get up. But you know what? We can answer this with Python. So one of the things I like to do, you know, these Feynman lectures are really old. They didn't have a very accessible, they did have numerical calculations. They could do computational solutions, but it wasn't as accessible as Python. So what I want to do is to, um, let's just do this one time uh, for one particular case and then see, let's just see if we can explore different cases and see how it works. I want to make, uh, a ball, throw it in the air with air resistance and make this plot and then we can see if it takes longer to go up or down. How's that sound? Okay, so let's jump over to Python. Um, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with Python, that's cool. It's all cool. So this is uh, Trinket. Uh, Trinket is a website um, and I'm starting here from the beginning just so you can see what it looks like that has a bunch of uh, embeddable programming languages in there. So if I go, I'm already logged in. So if I go up here and go to new trinket, you can see the different kinds that you can have. You get a Python, Python 3, Pygame, R, Blocks, and so forth. Java. Um, the ones with the key you can't save without a, a paid account. 
but the ones without the key, you can write whatever you want. And so we're going to go down here to GlowScript. So GlowScript is Python with three-dimensional stuff and graphing stuff built into it. Uh, and you can do this as uh, text Python, or you can do it with blocks like with, um, what was that, Scratch, or the Lego programming blocks. But don't I don't like those, because okay, so we're going to do this. Uh, there's also a Web v Python online, another uh, site, uh, but it has built-in classes for vectors, um, graphing, 3D objects. I don't feel like I'm going to actually make a 3D object. Let's just make a graph. Let's make a trajectory graph of a ball without air resistance, and then I'm going to add air resistance. So let's first make a graph. Now, I have a tutorial, a whole playlist on how to do stuff in Python. Um, for numerical calculations, so uh, I'll I'll link that down below, and you can you can go work through that whole course. And it's made for like introductory level uh, physics instructors to use in their course, but you could be a student and use it too. Okay, so the first thing we do is make a graph. Uh, G1 equals graph. Uh, let's give it a title, and that'll be what's the name of this problem? It's called uh, ball up down. Let's call that ball up down. I'll give it an X title. You don't have to do this. I just want to do this. Um, time in seconds. And let's give it a Y title, which will be Y in meters. Okay, so that just makes um, the encapsulation for the graph. What I actually need to do is to to make a graph, I actually need to make a function, a G curve. So I'm gonna say F1 equals G, and these names you can be whatever you want. G curve color equals color dot blue. I like blue, and that's that. Okay, so now I need my initial conditions. <clears throat> my initial conditions are, and, and in this case, we're gonna do a numerical calculation. So um, I, I should have shown you that on the paper, but I didn't. The idea is to break the problem into short time steps, and during each of those time steps, I can assume the air resistance force is constant uh, and and use that to calculate the net force and the the change and I'll do acceleration. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll do acceleration. Uh, so let's just do that. But that means I need some initial conditions. So I need uh, the initial velocity v, and this is in one dimension. Okay, so I'm not going to use a vector. And let's say I throw it up at five meters per second. I'm not going to give it any units because it's a number. Python wants to do a calculation with numbers. Uh, I need g is 9.8. I'm going to use the magnitude. Uh, I need t equals 0, y equals 0, need an initial y position. Uh, dt is the time step. Let's do 0 0.001. And <clears throat> I think that should be good. Okay, so let's just run this. Why am I running this? Okay, let's save it. Uh, what's it called? Ball up down. And there's no air resistance yet, right? We want to make sure that we get it to work without air resistance first. So I'm going to say while y is greater than or equal to 0, do the following. And number 1, I need to calculate the force. So I'll say f equals negative m times g. And I don't know what g is because I mean, m is because I never said it. Okay, so it said small ball. So let's say m equals 0 0.100 grams. That's kind of a large ball. Let's do... Zero, 50 grams. And then I can use that to calculate the acceleration, but I don't even need that. Let's just calc let's just use that force to update the velocity. So I'll say V equals, I really should do this as a vector. I'm going to do everything as vectors. I just feel like that's going to be better. It's going to be better. Vector 0, 5, 0. Vectors are built into Python. Vector <clears throat> 0, negative 9.8, 0. Uh, and I'm going to call this R vector 0, 0, 0. So now down here, I'm going to say while R dot Y. Because I can't do while a vector is greater than or equal to 0. I have to look at just the Y component. So now this equation is still the same, except I'd get rid of the negative sign. Because it's mass times G. G has a negative Y component. <clears throat> so now I can update the velocity. V equals V plus uh f times dt over m. So f over m is acceleration. And this is, if you haven't done uh, Python numerical calculations before, this looks weird, 
because it takes the old velocity, add the acceleration times dt, and make that the new velocity. So it, 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 you don't have to worry about all those indices and stuff like that. Now that I've updated the velocity, I can update the position. y equals, oh, no, no, I'm going to do r. r equals r plus v times dt. And now I'm going to update time. t equals t plus dt. Now I'm going to plot this stuff. So I'm going to say f1.plot. Uh, the x coordinate is going to be t. The y coordinate is going to be r dot y. And I think this should work. Let's run it. Yeah. So there you can see we get the time, uh, the total. Everything looks fine. Everything looks great. Okay. Now let's go back and add air resistance. So I need some air resistance properties. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's just do uh, rho equals 1.2. That's the density of air. Uh, how big is my ball? A equals the area. It's going to be pi times, it's like a, if I think of like a tennis ball, tennis ball has like a diameter of, let's say two centimeters, so one centimeter. So let's say 0 0.01 pi r squared. Uh, C equals 0 0.47. That's the, that's the drag coefficient for a, a sphere. Um, so now down here, what I'm going to do is for my total force, it's going to be this minus 0 0.5 times rho times A times C times the magnitude of V, right? I can, and I have to square that. And then I have to multiply that. I'm going to put that over here. The unit vector norm V. So now it does have, that's all it does is add it in that drag force. Now I can run it again and let's see what happens. Okay, so I don't really see much difference, but I think that's because my mass is too high. Let's make this a zero, let's make it less massive. Huh. Still not a difference. Okay, now it is different. Okay, let's make it drastically different. I can make this ball a little bit bigger, a 0 0.05, so it's five centimeters. So it's a really light, small ball. Okay, there. Yeah, that looks like what I said it looked like. Okay, so we can just roughly get the answer from up here. Uh, so it took 2.248 seconds to get up to the highest point, And then down would be uh, definitely more than that, right? Uh, I want to get these up down times. Let's see how I could do that. Uh, let's see. T up equals zero. T down equals zero. I don't know why I put it that way, but let's just say. So, <clears throat> how do I get that up time? So, what if I wait until the velocity, the y velocity gets to zero? So I can say if v dot y is less than zero, so it's negative, once it starts going back down, then see, I'm, I, I don't want to keep, I need to, like a marker. Let's see, how about we call this uh, up equals true. So if, then up equals false, right? So it's not going up anymore. Now, see, oh, I'm, I'm trying to think, just record it one time. I want the highest, the highest time, no, the lowest time. Okay, I'm not going to do this. I think I have the answer. I'm good with that. Let's just increase the velocity and see what happens. Uh, 15. I think it's going to be true all the time. Yeah, that's definitely true. Let's go back over here and make this smaller where I couldn't notice it uh, very much. Now right here, 1.02. Definitely it take longer. It took longer. Okay, so I think I think I've solved the problem. I think I've solved the problem. Um, it's going to take longer to come back down. Yeah, and I'm good with that. Okay, so if you go to the Caltech website, they do have uh, 
uh, posted solutions. I didn't look at those. You can look at those and see what they say. I really enjoy doing this with Python because, you know, you can kind of, I think, I think you understand things a little bit differently than trying to theoretically prove it uh, for every single case, which you should do too. But this gives you a better insight. It's a great first place to start. Okay, so all that stuff, I'll set a link down below. I'll try to remember to put it there. But this is the ball up down problem, and I'm going to make another one later.